Hey everyone, welcome to Scotland. I've been here for almost a week now, but I just found this and this is going to be my intro for the next three episodes. So stay tuned, we're going to go on a little road trip adventure. Going to be in the coldest weather I've been in Scotland, in the UK for a long time. And um, yeah, we're going to get some cool photos. Welcome to part two of my Scotland adventure. Today we're heading off to Isle of Skye, which is quite exciting. Um, while the rest of the UK is absolutely covered in snowstorm, I've been very, very lucky. And um, as you might see, it's, it's actually sunny and blue skies with some light, light clouds in the sky. Should make for a good sunset. I spent the last night in a little bunkhouse just because the first night was absolutely unbearable in minus eight degrees up in Glencoe and I deserved a night's sleep and I had a massive headache from that night. So yeah, stop making excuses. Let's go on an adventure. So, I had the option between going to the Isle of Skye or coming to Plotter Falls and it is blasting wind and there's no shelter on the Isle of Skye so I decided to come here where there's no wind and it's actually not cold for once. Before we go, lunch of course, but I want to get some of my gear ready. First of all I want to do some cinematics. And secondly, I want to shoot a high resolution shot today, so I'm going to need my tripod and the gimbal. I already have a good feeling about this place. One, I'm totally alone. I haven't met a single car on the way here. Two, all the water I've seen is frozen, so maybe a lot of the waterfall is actually ice. Could be a very exciting shot if that's true. They've done something really cool here. They made like a little boardwalk that goes right out over the waterfall. Now it kind of ruins your shots, but um, standing on the edge of it is quite, quite thrilling. Here it is. scrambling for like two hours upstream to find a way across and finally that here looks like a an easy crossing because I really don't want to fall in and um, yeah Whew. I was about to give up this was my last time I was gonna come down and see if I could cross or not so. <laughs> a shot that looks really interesting now what I'm doing is not putting the whole waterfall in the shot just the bottom part of it because there's all these icicles there's a lot of interest and I'm gonna add myself as a subject in this shot so I'm gonna self time it um, wearing the black jacket on the white ice and, and icicles and the waterfall I have to be very careful because it's incredibly slippery down here but uh, if it works out it's gonna be amazing Unfortunately, I'm running out of time. I could shoot more here and I could look for new compositions, new perspectives, but I just can't. There's not enough light left, really. 
uh, the sun is gone and I still have to walk back. I did a high res shot here too, but we'll come to that uh, later on as well. And yeah, let's move on and get back. Back on the road. Whew, it was quite the scramble. I don't know if it was worth it yet or not. It's always the exciting thing when you're shooting photos like that in such difficult to get to places. You don't know if your photo, if the effort's gonna be worth the photo you're going to get. Oh well, we'll see, right? I guess that's why we do it. We, it's the uncertainty of the result and repeating it and doing it over and over again until we get something we're satisfied with. Here we are at the famous ferry pools. Now it's a bit of a hike till we get there, but um, I was hoping to shoot this at sunset, but instead it's decided to start snowing. And I don't think there's gonna be any, any form of light. But I've driven a long way to come here, so I have to weigh up the decision. Do I shoot this or not? And do I shoot a bad photo or do I not shoot a photo at all? So we're gonna go up and see what we can do with absolutely the worst light possible it's very flat and um, yeah I mean <laughs> I'm not quite sure how, what we're gonna do with this but uh, that's the challenge today is to get a good shot in bad conditions so let's see what we can get look for when I'm shooting in bad lighting conditions one texture two I really like contrast if I can find it if the light is not too flat the contrast can also be opposing colors it can be white and black it can be objects that contrast with each other in the shot and the third thing I look for or that I try to create is a deep shot something that has a lot of depth so I'm looking for a foreground something that leads us into the background and an element in the background so the light is the least important factor of that photo it's more the composition and the leading lines and the way every all the elements sit together in that shot that's what i really try to balance when i'm shooting in bad light combining two really cool features. One, I'm just using a regular old long exposure technique to smooth out the water in my composition just because there is ice and water in the same place and I really want the water be, to be smooth so we get the maximum amount of texture where the ice is. So we're separating those two elements by using a long exposure time. The second feature I'm using is the high resolution mode. It's a special feature in some select Olympus cameras that you can use to create a high resolution shot. So we're talking 50 to 80 megapixel files. It depends what kind of mode you're shooting. JPEG and RAW results in different resolutions. But up to 80 megapixels you can shoot with the sensor of a 20 megapixel camera, which is pretty amazing. Now this is gonna get a little bit techy, but I, I really enjoy this part. It's, it's, it's what makes these cameras so mind-blowingly amazing, in my opinion. So, so how does the camera do it? Well, the camera shifts the sensor three times, brings it back to the original position, and does the whole thing again. So what does that mean? Normally, a pixel on a sensor is made up of RGB values, red, greens, and blues. And on a sensor, we have different elements that capture those light rays so we have the greens the blues and the reds and a regular sensor when you take a photo it'll grab 
those three values and puts them in and creates the pixel. Now it's using the information from a certain area to create a pixel. And so we have, when we have a green point here, a blue one there and a red one there, this is an example, it's not exactly how it goes, but if we shift the sensor once, twice and three times, that means on every exact spot we once will have a green, a blue and a red value. That means we have the exact color value in one spot. Ultimately that means you get a lot better color information and a lot less noise in your shot. And then what does the camera do next? It shifts the whole thing and creates another image and puts them together so we get the shifting and suddenly we have double the amount of pixels because the sensor has moved across. That's pretty amazing, right? a couple of panoramas, vertical panoramas, and yeah, I worked my way down the stream, but I think ultimately the first spot I picked right at the top is my favorite one, and I think looking for more now is not going to yield a better shot. And um, it's getting darker and even flatter the light, so I'm really, I think I shot the best possible shot I could have gotten in these conditions here. And um, yeah, we used some cool features. Um, I'm gonna be stitching some panoramas together, uh, I used a high resolution shot, I used a long exposure, so lots of cool stuff you can use to spice up your images. Alright, now let's head back to the parking lot and then we're off to the next location. Pretty close to the top now. There's up to something absolutely amazing happening. Wait until you see this. Yeah. 